What's up everybody, it's Josh. All right, so I've got a more controversial gaming laptop video for you all today. Have you ever wished that you could pump a little more wattage to your laptop's GPU? You know, your temps are never that high and you'd even be willing to apply new thermal paste to your machine if it meant you could get more wattage. Well, if I got something for you, while it may be controversial, we're gonna talk about loading up and flashing a custom vBIOS onto your gaming laptop. Now I have to give a warning in advance. Uh, while flashing a vBIOS can work on many different gaming laptops, this is not not a guaranteed performance boost, and it is not guaranteed to be 100% safe for your computer. I have to advise you all that if you don't go into this following the steps and precautions necessary, that you could very well break your laptop. I know this because I've done it. I had an HP Omen 15 with an Intel processor, and I was in DGPU mode uh, when I flashed the vBIOS and I couldn't come back from it, and because when you're in DGPU mode, your laptop has no secondary display adapter to fall back on if something fails. So um, that's why this is a lot easier to attempt on on a laptop that can function in hybrid mode and um, it helps if it has some sort of display output that bypasses Optimus such as your HDMI port or USB-C port um, as long as that connects directly to your GPU which you can verify in your NVIDIA control panel. Now let's talk about what a vBIOS is. It's different than a BIOS flash okay. Your BIOS is like your control center for everything regarding your laptop's hardware. Your vBIOS only controls your dedicated GPU. It basically tells it how much wattage and clock speed to run at. Uh, so think of it like an instruction manual. So using a vBIOS from a higher wattage laptop, usually as long as it's within the same specs or brand, can be an effective way to raise your GPU wattage and overclocking capabilities as long as it's cooled well. Because remember, with increased wattage comes increased heat. So today, I'll be showing you how you can flash a vBIOS on the Asus Zephyrus G15 or any similar gaming laptop. This could be really helpful for some people who are stuck getting low FPS in some games, and um, I would definitely recommend you check out my optimization guide first before doing any of this, but um, if you've done that and it's still just not running how you'd like, this may work well for you. Uh, you also need to be willing to potentially run this thing at max fans or possibly even replace the thermal paste to do this effectively, but I'll get into that. Before I get all the way into this, uh, if you could, please just leave a like and subscribe. Um, that would really just help this channel grow. I'm trying to make more laptop videos and more frequent timing. So every little like, every subscription counts. Um, really appreciate that. Anyways, let's keep going. So first step is picking out a vBIOS that is compatible and has a wattage that you would like to achieve. Uh, usually anything from the same brand of laptop with the same GPU will work. So for example, I have the Asus Zephyrus G15 here with an RTX 3070 that runs at 100 watts. I can pretty safely flash the vBIOS BIOS from the Asus Strix G15 with the RTX 3070 that runs at 115 to 130 watts. Since they have similar designs and configurations and they're both Asus, but one is just allowed more wattage, there should be no trouble swapping from one to the other. And then there are those of other brands that have been tested by the community already. You know, our, our fellow soldiers out there willing to risk their laptop for those beautiful frames. One of those that is known to work on many different brands are some of the vBIOS flashes from MSI. And to quickly show you an example of the difference Here's me playing the Warzone training and the differences seen between each vBIOS. Now keep in mind this is only one example and the FPS differences can change a lot depending on the game, uh, which I'll get into in a minute, but I need to touch on what you'll need to do this first. So the tool needed to accomplish this is just this one free software called NV Flash. Now there's one problem with NV Flash is that it hasn't been updated and may throw a board ID mismatch error. Um, this happens when switching vBIOSes for RTX 3000 series cards in particular. Because of this, the gaming laptop community took things into their own hands, made a modified version of the NV Flash program. It is reputable, I promise. Um, here's screenshots of it, and it makes it super easy to swap the vBIOS of any laptop without any roadblocks in the way. Uh, you can even browse the vBIOS collection of almost any gaming laptop on this website called Tech Power Up. Uh, there's just a few things you want to check with each one first. You want to make sure, you know, of course, that it's a mobile GPU that you're getting the vBIOS for. You can check the brand, you can check the uh, clock speeds, stuff like that. Um, I would prefer to just stick with the ones that people have already tested, but just to let you know. Now, if you're like me, you probably only want to try vBIOS mods that other people have already used with success. Uh, so I'm only going to be going over those in this video, because if you want to try other ones out there, you kind of just, you, you've got to do that at your own risk, or any of these, really. Um, I am not taking responsibility for any of you out there going crazy with this and just breaking your computer. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the more popular ones, and those are the 115-watt um, modified MSI vBIOS 
BIOS, the 130, 140 watt MSI V BIOS, the 115 to 130 watt Strix G15 V BIOS, and of course the Shunt Mod MSI GS66 V BIOS. Uh, my favorite of which is the Strix G15 V BIOS. It you know runs between 115 to 130 depending on how well your GPU is cooled. Since it's Asus, it knows when to throttle itself down if it gets too hot. Um, it works really well with this laptop, and since it's coming from a, a laptop of a similar line, I just trust it more. But um, a lot of people have had excellent results with some of these 140 watt ones, um, the shunt mod one, which now the MSI GS66 shunt mod is the most different out of all of these. This one I think was stumbled upon by accident. It essentially has a bug that actually works as an advantage for performance. Uh, what happens is with this VBIOS, your system will only think that you're using like 30 or 40 watts of your GPU uh, when really you're using like 140. Unfortunately, you're not going to get a completely accurate reading, but based on people's performance scores and stuff, it seems to uh, roughly equal about 140 watts. And this performance can be seen in people's time spy scores um, who've used it. The only downside is you won't be able to actually tell the true wattage. Uh, the 115 watt modified MSI VBIOS is one that I found on Discord. Unfortunately, I don't have a link to that one, but I will include it in my zip file. Um, that one's also pretty safe and, you know, 115 watts, this thing can definitely handle. Um, as we can see, you know, the 2022 Zephyrus G15s are going to come with 120 watt 3070 Ti's. So, you know, obviously this thing should theoretically be able to handle 115 watts. Um, there's also the 110 watt Razer VBIOS. That one reports itself as a 130 watt VBIOS, but it actually runs at 110. This one's really good if you're just having trouble staying um, in the hundreds at all. If your GPU is only hitting like 80 watts all the time and you really just want it to be over 100, this is a great one to use. All right. So before I go into how to swap the VBIOS, I want to say that results really do seem to vary for everyone. Uh, for example, the highest power I was able to get was like 120 to 130 watts, and that was out of the Strix G15 VBIOS, while I've seen others out there who were able to get 140 watts um, with no problems out of theirs. So, but when I try those, my G15 just thermal throttles super hard, and I don't see any performance increase because of that. So it's kind of just about finding the sweet spot, finding the one that works for you um, and your machine. And I guess just kind of depends on how big of a win you got on the silicon lottery, you know, the thermal paste lottery for your laptop. The best way though, to ensure good results thermally is to just simply repaste your system. Um, obviously that can vary too, depending on the stock paste that you were given, such as liquid metal. And if you want to go through all that and you know, I could do that with mine, but I'm pretty happy with how it's performing as is. All right. So let's load up NV flash. Um, I've got a link in the description for downloading it. It's a zip folder that contains the program itself, as well as my selection of a lot of community tested V BIOS ROMs that you can try out. But I'll also have each link separately in the description if you're more comfortable downloading them separately. Once you've downloaded it, you're going to want to run command prompt as admin, find the location of the folder where the VBIOS is saved, unzip it, copy the address text, and then in command prompt, just type CD, lowercase, space, and then paste the address text. It should look like this. Now that you're in the folder in command prompt, you need to first make a backup of your current ROM. Uh, you can flash back to this backup in case anything goes wrong with whatever VBIOS you're trying to use. And so to do that, just type this. Next, you'll want to type NV flash space with two hyphens protect off. Yeah, I know that sounds sketchy, but what this does is you're basically telling NV flash. Yes, I understand the potential consequences of my actions. Now, please unlock my VBIOS so I can replace it. And after that, type NV flash with a space followed by the exact file name of the ROM that you want to load. Now it's going to prompt you with a bunch of are you sure stuff like that. Uh, just do as it says and type yes or Y for each one. And once that's done, you're going to need to reboot your machine and that's it. After you've rebooted, check your NVIDIA control panel. Make sure that the new wattage numbers are showing up. Um, if it's not open device manager, make sure that your NVIDIA card is showing up there. If it's not, you might need to reboot a couple more times for it to go through. <laughs> I've had to do that before. Um, sometimes it'll show Microsoft basic display adapter. If it shows that um, it's happened to me, you just need to reboot your laptop again and it should show back up as the NVIDIA card. Now, some of these have some weird characteristics um, like the Strix V BIOS allows your CPU to run at a higher clock speed, uh, which it normally wouldn't. So here in Warzone, for example, my CPU would normally be at 3200 uh, megahertz, but here it's over 4000. And some of these will increase the wattage of the GPU without affecting the CPU, uh, such as the Razer 110 watt VBIOS. So it all comes down to your machine, what you're testing, how you're testing, silicon lottery, all that stuff.
All right, so now let's talk about the benchmarks that I got here from flashing this VBIOS. Most of all of these benchmarks are from the Strix G15 VBIOS, which is 115 to 130 watts, as that one performed the best on my system without raising temperatures too much. So as you can see in TimeSpy here, um, this is in hybrid mode on both. The original um, 8200 watts that the G15 gets scored 9635, while the VBIOS for the Strix G15 gives you a score of 10,291. Um, so that's about about like a thousand point increase almost on the graphic score so not too bad um, this is great for if synthetic benchmarks are your thing but I'm more concerned with gaming performance which we'll get into in a minute so in DGPU mode the original gets 9957 the Strix G15 130 watt VBIOS scored us 10,563 so this one also again almost a thousand point increase on the GPU but CPU score did go down a little bit real quick I'm going to show the a couple other ones here the 110 watt razor gives you 10,135 here and the modified msi 115 watt gives you 10,302 now undervolting is a possibility for your gpu uh, for those of you who don't want to increase temperatures but you do want to see some increased performance um, this is what it looks like when i just do an undervolt um, and you can see undervolting the gpu on the regular stock v bios of the g15 gets me right there with the 110 watt razor v bios so it's almost like a free extra 10 watts and if you want to know how to do that um, I have a quick guide in my optimization video which I'll link to and another thing you can do to lower temperatures a little bit if your CPU is getting up there um, you can disable CPU boost by doing a registry edit if you disable boost in your power plan it kind of allows your GPU to run a little higher so it's getting you know the 10,700s now but that CPU score does drop but I mean this is just for those of you that you just want GPU wattage you don't really care too much about CPU you can do that. All right, so now let's look at some games. Synthetic benchmarks are, are great and all, but this is where we're going to see how much a VBIO swap really changes things. So Horizon Zero Dawn is one of those games that is, I found pretty, pretty sensitive to wattage and RAM timings and stuff like that. In 1080p on the uh, ultimate quality preset hybrid mode, um, this one saw a six FPS increase. So we're looking 80 on the original, 86 on the Strix G15 VBIOS. So six FPS increase there, not too bad. Bad. Now bump it up to 1440p in hybrid mode and we're looking at 71 FPS and 76 on the Strix G15. Notice how the CPU FPS also increased here. Um, like I was saying, the Strix G15 VBIOS, at least for me, it let my CPU run at a higher wattage while my GPU was still clocking high. So it kind of lets it boost differently, which was nice. And that's kind of why you're seeing a increase in CPU and GPU here. Now connected to an external monitor, we're running on DGPU mode. Uh, 1080p results are a little different different. Now there's only a two FPS difference, 88 on the stock, 90 on the Strix G15 V BIOS. Um, CPU FPS was still a little higher here. And then going to 1440p, it's a little different, 77 on the stock, 82 on the V BIOS. Um, again, a little increase in CPU as well. And now we're going to go to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here's the settings I was using on the highest preset, uh, 1080p hybrid mode. We are getting 117 on the Strix G15 15 VBIOS and 107 on the regular. Um, now keep in mind, this is after I've swapped the RAM as well in my system. So if you have um, the stock 16 gigs of RAM, you might see different results, um, possibly a little lower on both sides. I'm running 24 gigs in mine, but yeah, so a 10, uh, so a 10 FPS increase there, not bad. This is a pretty RAM hungry game. So um, just keep that in mind. And when we hook it up to an external monitor, we're getting 117 with the stock and 124 with with the VBIOS, seven FPS increase there. Again, not too much, but it's something. Now, 1440p, um, we've got 84 on the stock VBIOS, 89 FPS on the on the 130 watt. Um, not much of an increase, uh, just five FPS there, but um, I'm running in turbo mode here. So if I max out the fans, you can get a couple extra FPS on your VBIOS because we're already hitting pretty high temps here. So that definitely helps. You know, you can see I get 91 now. Now let's move on to Forza Horizon 5. These are the settings I'm using, the extreme preset, VSync off. In 10 
1080p hybrid mode, the stock VBIOS is getting 71 FPS. The Strix VBIOS is getting a 76 FPS. So a five FPS increase there, not too bad. Um, switch it over to external monitor. We're getting a four FPS increase going from 76 to 80. Again, not too bad of an increase there. In 1440p hybrid mode, we're going from 60 to 66. Um, so just a six FPS increase. And I just want to show you real quick. On the left, I have a screenshot of the original 16 gigs of RAM that I had here. So I'm already gaining two FPS by having 24 gigs of RAM. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then on external monitor uh, with Optimus Bypass, we're getting 65 and 69 FPS with the Strix V BIOS. Pretty nice. Again, on the original 16 gigs of RAM, we were only getting 62 FPS here. Now Call of Duty Warzone, again, love it how they took out the practice match where I used to get all this data. Now I have to go into a real game and get shot up by people left and right as I'm trying to just record data. But um, I recorded this before that. Activision is really good at giving upgrades and taking things away in the process. So thank you. Um, anyways, I'm in two areas here. I'm on top of this roof and then on this staircase. Original stock G15 gets 95 FPS here on top of this roof, whereas the V BIOS gets 106 FPS. So not a bad little increase there. And again, I had five FPS less at this time when I was using 16 gigs of RAM, just showing you that here. So now down to the staircase below, we get 100 FPS here on the stock and 110 FPS with the Strix G15 V BIOS. So not bad. Um, and then just to show you again, I was getting two FPS less here on 16 gigs of RAM. Check out my RAM video um, if you are interested in upgrading that in your G15. And lastly, I'm going to play control here at 1440p on an external monitor. Um, so I'm running at the highest preset with ray tracing on and we're getting 41 FPS here stock at this area in the mail room. Uh, we load up the V BIOS and now we are getting 46 FPS. So uh, not much of an increase, but that's not bad either. And that concludes uh, the gaming benchmarks. Now I'm just going to talk about why. Why do this anyways? Why even go through all the effort uh, for that extra bump in performance? I think, you know, obviously wattage is not the answer to everything here. Um, there's a lot of factors that come into play when it comes to gaming laptops and their performance. Um, we've just kind of been led to believe that wattage is a big, huge deal when really some games run better because of a different RAM configuration or a different CPU configuration. Um, so it can just be a lot of different things, different processor, um, different CPU, different GPU, AMD versus Intel, NVIDIA versus AMD. Uh, so it all comes down to the game and the equipment and how it's cooled. Um, that affects performance a lot more than wattage does. So uh, just something to keep in mind, you know, and I think with all of this, I mean, let's be honest, if if we didn't see that little FPS number in the corner, we probably would not even notice a difference on all, pretty much all of these. Uh, I think I just think it's important to remind ourselves that, you know, that extra five FPS and falling down the whole FPS rabbit hole, um, that's not what getting a laptop should be about. Obviously, yes, you want the best out of your machine. And if it is truly underperforming, this could help. But I think overall, um, it's not really worth the extra effort and increase in temperature. You know, sometimes I think it's just healthier to disable the FPS counter and just have a good time, you know, have fun, play some games. Don't worry about your FPS so much. As long as it looks smooth and it plays smooth, you know, just enjoy it. I think a lot of us are frame chasers to a degree, and I'm super guilty of this myself, wondering, oh, if I'd got a 140 watt laptop, would I be able to run this game better? Or if I just got a 3080 instead of a 3070? But at the end of the day, all that matters is that your laptop runs at its best and it and you can always tweak settings in the game to make your experience great you know we're not always having to do ultra ultra ray tracing on you know all this stuff most of the time people can't tell the difference anyway but that's a whole nother topic anyways my personal opinion um while i do find it kind of cool to be able to get an extra five or six fps on some games with the v bios mods uh for me it's not really worth it i'd rather just undervolt my gpu get lower temps and get similar performance if not just a little bit less um but for those those of you who really want to match your friend's 150 watt, 140 watt, 3070, um, then sure, this is how you can do it and enjoy your boost in frames. Um, but I think it could actually be helpful for those of you who are stuck. Maybe your GPU just is stuck at 80 watts for some reason. It just really doesn't want to boost up to 100. Then this could actually be good for you to load, you know, 110 watt or 115 watt. See what happens. See if it helps your performance. Um, but yeah, that's it. So anyways, thanks so much, guys, for watching. I hope this was informative for some of you guys. Um, you know, VBIOS 
modding can be kind of scary. A lot of people don't want to do it, but um, I've found for the most part, it's pretty safe to do. But as long as you're aware of the risks and the you know actual benefits of doing it, um, I think this could be helpful. So anyways, leave a like um, if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe. A lot of the viewers on my channel aren't subscribed, so I would really appreciate uh, just a subscribe because I have a lot more laptop content coming soon, including the Legion 7i. Um, I have a Razer Blade 17 3080, a Mech 15 3080, and a Legion 7 AMD 3080 that I'm also testing out right now. So I'm have, I have a lot of videos I'm working on and it would really just help support the channel and help it grow if you guys subscribed. Leave a like and a comment. Anyways, thank you so much guys for watching. Till next time, see ya.